so excited to introduce our next performer, uh, Kari Kamani Turner, co-author of Surrender, The Rise, Fall, and Revelation of Kwame Kilpatrick, has a body of work that spans media, music, the arts, and education. A longtime Detroit-based Detroit writer, he is passionate about telling the stories of compelling American lives. As an artist, his passion for poetry, songwriting, and performance is boundless and documented. Since beginning his writing career with The Source Magazine, he's contributed to more than 20 national and regional publications over a 17-year span. Many Detroiters recognize him for his work with Metro Times. He's also been recognized as an expert on pop culture and social issues appearing on Fox News, the NBC show Flashpoint, VH1's Ultimate Albums, Views TV, and Quincy Jones the Third's B Series. He's an educator who's taught urban studies, poetry, and hip hop at Oakland University. He's delivered lectures and keynote addresses at several other universities, commencements, community organizations, and churches. He and his wife, Tunisia, also an actor, actress and vocalist, have facilitated workshops on healthy relationships. Note to self, Dr. Carter later. Using a 13 year partnership <laughs> as a backdrop for healthy discourse. I'm sorry, you know, I always got jokes. He has recorded two award winning albums with his band, Black Bottom Collective. <laughs> And shared stages with artists ranging from Stevie Wonder to Common. His self published book, Out of You Early Self Love Activism, helped to usher in a wave, Ray, with a whole shot to read, a wave of burgeoning Detroit writers and poets. I am so grateful to have him on the free verse stage this afternoon. Um, he's actually the only person I don't have an anecdote for because we're just meeting today. But after this, we'll have one. Please join me in welcoming Harry. <laughs> Somebody say, Rhonda is the illest. <laughs> thank you, uh, in, in advance, Rhonda. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I've, been, I've been watching your grind and your work from afar for about two years now. Um, and I've been proud from afar. That's my anecdote uh, to you. Uh, you never know who's watching you and you're doing your thing. And thank you. Uh, Okay, so real talk, I was uh, like in the woodwork underground for a couple of years, and I'm, I feel the most at home when I'm with artists, so uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, bringing me back out, and it's nice to be at a home with a whole bunch of people that's not a courtroom over something I wrote. That's a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's get down to business here. Um, I, I must say the there, there's one phase of, of Dr. King's life uh, that has always intrigued me more than any other phase in his life, and it's the years after the March on Washington. Uh, because those were the years when he was personally tried uh, internally, um, more than at any point uh, in his ministry and in the, his work with the Civil Rights Movement, uh, particularly um, between FBI surveillance, uh, consistent threats on his life, um, Michael Eric Dyson writes about this in his book, I May Not Get There With You. Uh, he talks extensively about the despair, the depression, the loneliness that Dr. King went through. Many of you remember who, well, this is before my time, but many of you here might remember uh, that it was after he won the Nobel Peace Prize that many of our people hated on him uh, for some of the new issues that he started to address, the Vietnam War, uh, the sanitation workers strike in Memphis, uh, those issues divided his base, and he considered things like the validity of nonviolent conflict, or maybe the necessity of African Americans to secede from the United States. Um, he thought about those things, and in some instances, I understand, had conversations. I wasn't in the room, of course, but my understanding is that he wrapped all that up when he delivered his speech, uh, I've been to the mountaintop. That's where he came back to form. Um, and the thing that it always teaches me is that no matter what we go through, if you have some kind of constitution in you, uh, some kind of base, there's something that always shines through in your time of consternation and it brings you back to form. 
Um, so I'm going to do a piece called Invocations, dedicated to the city of Detroit, to my daddy's old neighborhood, Black Bob, uh, and to what the people there had to deal with, uh, just to get through. Bring it, Black Bob. I love what you've done for me. I love your tenacity. I love your never say die. You're up ye mighty people. You're accomplished what you will. I love your will. I love your boundaries. Your northeast side. Your southeast side. Your dark, rich soil, cool and sexy as the evening. I love your name, Black Bottom, because you're not at the bottom. You're just the foundation for all things up. So bring it, Black Bottom. Bring Reverend C.L. See, I heard Aretha's daddy was one bad man. Not bad, meaning bad, but bad, meaning good. And if you push a little bit of that good and that love, we all gonna learn to think just a little bit different. So bring it, Black Bottom. Bring your 22 physicians. Bring your 22 lawyers. Bring your 20 barbershops. Bring your 13 dentists. Bring 11 tailors. Bring 10 restaurants. Bring eight grocery stores. Bring five undertakers. You can even bring that one candy maker. And when we get it all together, we gonna call that a hood. Bring it on home, Black Bottom. Because once it's all in one place, we gonna call that all. And that belongs to us. So bring it, Black Bottom. Bring Hastings Street. Bring Paradise Valley. Bring Billy Eckstein. Bring Pearl Bailey. Bring John Lee Hooker. Bring Duke Ellington. Bring Ella Fitzgerald. Bring Joe Lewis. Bring John Lee Hooker. Bring Miller Middle School. That's my daddy's alma mater. Don't play with that Black Bottom. Just bring it. Bring it like you brought it to us. Bring it to the same game. Bring it to these new players. You never died. You just passed the torch. And it went on down through the age of Aquarius and Ronald Reaganomics. Then we all got introduced to crack, coke, house music, hip hop, techno, Kevin Eddie, Derek, and Juan. Now, Black Bottom carries on. We flowing like every young people. This goes out to Detroit hip hop, y'all. Chaos, Maestro, Easy B, Los, the D, y'all, same folk. Same time, chaos, maestro, easy B, y'all, metaphysics, everybody in the house, make some noise, Detroit hip hop, bring you and your boys. We going on down through the ages, through the ageless, through these pages, to these stages, all poets in the vicinity. Make some noise if you're hearing me. Make some noise if you're hearing me. Must I say it again? Detroit Michigan, 313 represents. I don't know where you're going. And I don't know where you went, but in your time of sorrow and consternation, at some point come back to center. There is no inflation, and it's still just one nation. Represent. I was told that love carries me over, that love saves souls, that love fed me and clothed me, and raised and composed me. I was taught that love helps addicts regain control, that love called me a man. Love married and chose me. Love has given me challenges, checks, and balances. Love even studied, steady, and ready me. Love shot my heart with and without silences, and in the presence of pain, love toughened my frame. Now, love was the first to tell me truth hurts. And back then, love did not do what it would rock him. Love of God to me is the most attractive, and this black skin is just one of the things love's wrapped in. I was told that love told the thug, blood. You more than society's dregs. You're a king if you just know the ledge. Love is the reason to live, the rationale for dying. And I was taught that God is are the only words that can define it. That's because love is 10% of all you do. But love is 90% of all you are. That's because when love is in your life, you live just a little lively. Love is that little big thing, kind of like Aaliyah. Love is patient and passionate. Love will make a man feed his woman strawberries up out of a bassinet and love never dies. But love will make you lie down with dogs if your vision is foggy. Love is to life what X is to sex. It might kill you if it's not put in its proper context. Love is like day to night, dark to light, left 
to write loose, tight does to Donald my love is tenement buildings and skyscrapers. Love is abject poverty. Love is stacks of paper. Love is the reason to live, the rationale for dying. And I was taught that God is are the only words that can define it. Now listen, love once told me how love can improve sex. And then said, Kari, do you want to have sex or connect? Love is not about like. Love is about respect. And I don't like Falling in love, I would prefer to take steps. That's because love hurts like life. The life is like love. It's like one day you get a push for a shove, the next day you turn a vulture to a dove. Hermetic law said, so below, so above. People amuse me. Acting smooth like a Trey Songz tune when love's got ways of turning plums to prunes. Then again, love's got ways of turning prunes to pits. And if you plant a pit right, it's bound to grow again. Slick, that's new boogie. Love is the greatest combat artist in sugar. Otis, recognize, don't blow this. Just because you lost one time, it don't mean that you're going to lose again. Because love is not what love seems. You live through it because love said you are strong enough. So love through it. Emerge with stronger stuff. Love is the reason to live, the rationale for dying. And I was taught that God is are the only words that can define it. That's why we spell it L-O-V-E. Bottom line for living says G-O-D. Rearrange life to L-O-V-E. And we all L-I-E. Mm -hmm. God.